The Digi Showdown for the Digimon Card Game Prize Tournament is finally here. I'm once again a different fight. Joining me today is East. East, how are we feeling for this tournament so far? We've had some insane games, and this is the one that it all comes down to for this first bracket. Yeah, dude. Louis the Panda has been on a tear so far, doing some really cool plays in a bunch of different matches against a bunch of different BT7 and EX1 uh, decks. Man, I cannot wait to get into this last one. Absolutely. Same here, same here. Of course, you know, we'll be bringing you the latest Digimon card game news as well as these amazing showdown matches. Make sure you check out the previous ones if you haven't already because they have been fire so far. And of course, Digi Showdown is a tournament that can be enjoyed by both veterans and new players alike where players duke it out for some sweet prizes. Now, East, let's tell the viewers once again, you know, what are some of these amazing prizes that these players have been playing for? Yeah, so if you're just hopping into the to the series, good news for you guys, we've got 10 different challengers split up into two groups of five, and they're going to be each fighting against one of our two champions. So we're going to have five challengers fighting against one champion, and there are some tiers to the prizing here. So for every match the champion can win over the challengers, they're going to start out with that $1,000 in training prize and then work their way up $1,000 every match to potentially up to $5,000, but if they win all five of their matches, that $5,000 prize is going to be upgraded Digivolve to the mega level $10,000 prize. Meanwhile, on the challenger side, they're going to be doing the same thing. If they can defeat a champion, they're going to take home $1,000 in their pocket. If they can all defeat the champion, however, they're going to upgrade their own prize to everybody receiving $2,000 US dollars. So and there's a lot on the line for every single one of these games. You're not playing just for yourself, but also for the rest of your teammates across both of these champions, man. I am so excited for this tournament. Yep, it's gonna be super, super exciting. I think the last four games, you know, we got to see so many different hybrid decks. You know, that's kind of the highlight of BT7 is the introduction of hybrids to every single color. And I cannot wait to see how this last match will go down as well. You know, we've seen the beauties of blue and yellow and green. And, you know, while they all use hybrids and these super powerful tamers in many different ways, it feels like the decks are completely different in how they function, even though they share this kind of like similar attribute of being hybrid focus, right? And so I really can't wait to see how things are going to go down in this next match and what kind of decks we're going to be able to see in this next one too and whether Lewis can continue to defend himself going up against his final challenger, which is going to be Jetney. So this is going to be really exciting. I think we actually have an interview from the challenger, so let's hear what he has to say. Hi everyone, my name is Jetney. I'm a Digimon Tamer from California, and today I'll be playing Yellow, uh, Yellow Hybrid. And I've always grown up watching some Digimon, uh, some of the shows growing up, and some of the games. And I've always liked playing card games. So when my friend told me uh, last year to try out uh, the Digimon card game, it was a no-brainer. And ever since then, it's uh, it's been a passion project and a hobby for me. Oof. I I feel pretty good. I did uh, a lot of my deck research, uh, meta research. Um, did some play testing uh, online. So hopefully all that is uh, enough to defeat the champion today. What I'm hoping to accomplish today is to just prove myself uh, that uh, the challengers can beat the champions, the underdogs, <laughs> fighting for the underdogs today and also just to bring more uh, publicity to the Digimon card game because I think this is a really great game and I think more people uh, will enjoy it if they try it out. So guys, let's get into our last game of Louis the Panda's run. He's going up against his final challenger, Jetney. Let's see how this match turns out. Jetney's going to be going first. Let's get into it. All right, well, I'm really excited to see, you know, for Louis, he has been having quite the hot streak and just being able to win in so many different ways and showing off the many strengths of Blue Hybrid as well. Ooh, we see here Jetney, he's just going for the tried and tested, you know, just game start TK, being able to confirm for anything you want in the security. Now, you know, not only being able to fetch whatever you need out of security, but also just know what's in there so you can plan out your game plan for the rest of this match. Yeah, so Yellow Hybrid, especially known for how strong their tamers are. TK is just one of those guys. 
It's gonna get the recovery here, and you have to be careful to get set up to, uh, over the course of the game. Yellow can really just grind you out of resources, keep recovering security over and over again. So I want to see how Lewis stays that off. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, we know that his deck is capable of answering all kinds of boards, being able to push through lethal in multiple kinds of ways. You know, that's kind of the strength of Magna Garumon as well, is that it just has the ability to just jump you know, into the Magna Gurumon and then be able to unsuspend it as long as you added a card to your hand through an effect and then just be able to push out so many attacks at the same time. But of course, we'll see what he's going to do here. Oh man, the Beowulf Mon again. We saw this in uh, some of the previous games. That Beowulf Mon gets so many swings that the opponent can't attack into it. Yeah, you know, not being able to attack into it. Doesn't get taken out because of the jamming. But he's going to go for the safer play, just go for a blue memory boost. And get a search effect off, which will be very important. Ooh. Ooh, Do okay. need something blue. <laughs> Does can pick up the Kumamon there. He does leave uh, Jetney on three memory because Jetney has the TK out. He's going to anyway, so this play is most efficient. All right, that's good. But you can also kind of read from the situation that for Lewis's opening, you know, it feels like he might be missing a Tamer. Might be some of them might be stuck in the security. Whereas it's the opposite case for Jetney here. And for Lewis, this game is so important because, you know, he's already won himself $4,000. You know, that is a pretty amazing prize, <laughs> you know, just for playing the Digimon card game, right? I think that's any Digimon card game player's dream right now. But if he wins this one, he gets to not only cop another thousand, but double the prize at the same time, which is incredible. Oh, it looks like uh, Jenny gonna be playing down the Zoro Orimoto. He said, "You know what? I like the card in security so or in security so much that I'm just gonna I'll grab another one." <laughs> yep. Okay. Analog Youth here, gonna get to use the search effect, adding the Gazimon. I quite like that, especially in this matchup where it's really important to try to turn off any kind of like memory gain effects as much as possible. Of course, it doesn't turn off the effects from Tamers, but. This is, of course, gonna disable the blue memory boost, which kind of invites uh, Lewis to use it right now. Yeah, so it looks like he's gonna swing with the Beowulf on his side. So because of the uh, Stravimon, the uh, inheritance effect is gonna gain one memory off that attack, and then hits another, another tamer. Use. Oh! <laughs> I mean, you have to, to know that you know Jenny had to have planned this, right? He he tried to uh, throw in and take out as many of the Digimon out of his security and you know fill it up with uh, Tamer so that he gets them whenever the security's checked for free. Absolutely, absolutely, and also, you know, being able to just have all these Tamers at your disposal is so so huge because of course this will just keep piling into all of those hybrids. But in addition, he's also setting up his drop zone, which we know is really, really important in this particular deck for the Susanomon. So looks like Lou's playing another Stravimon search track, gonna grab one Stravimon and put the Magnus Room at the top of the stack when he puts him at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, that's right. Oh, there's a Tamer. Ooh. We do want to see that. He finds a Tamer. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't give you any memory gain, so... <laughs> yeah, it's still an incredible tamer, and of course has a pretty mm. powerful effect, you know, in compensation for not having a uh, memory effect. So, I think he's still pretty happy to see at least some kind of tamer, you know, when the whole deck is built around that. But now, you know, I'm starting to look yeah. at... I'm already starting to look at Jedni's side, because this is Sanomon is gonna start to be a bit of a threat. You know, we see one in the trash here, but mm -hmm. if we start seeing, you know, Jedni build up the trash more and more and more in order to just jump into the Sanomon from one of his tamers, it's gonna be very scary for Lewis all of a sudden. All right, the Gazimon does come down, which means that Lewis knows he has one turn to use that memory boost. Otherwise, it's going to be a null and void for as long as that Gazimon sticks around. Exactly. You have to feel good right, here with Jetney, though. You've already got four tamers mm -hmm. up. It's it's only like, you know, very early into the game. And it looks like he might actually spin one of these and go into a hybrid. Okay, finally, we, we're starting to see the board space being taken up here. And of course, you know, the hybrids in yellow in particular are really strong for, you know, 
Of course, hybrids on their own are powerful, but on top of that, he has recovery effects, and he can immediately go into that with something like Jet Sylveon if he has it in hand here to just keep himself safe from the explosive power of Lewis's deck. The, the issue here is that Beowulf Mon is, uh, again, a problem. He cannot attack into it, so how do you get rid of this guy? Yep, exactly. Okay, Jet Sylphia Mon coming down here as we talked about earlier. So now because there is a Tamer in the Digivolution cards, the memory costs only one for this evolution and also gets to recover one. Therefore going back up to five in full health. Yeah, it's like, like Beowulf Mon didn't even attack. Maybe this is actually one way to stop the Beowulf Mon. You just keep recovering so that all their attacks basically don't even matter. Yeah, exactly. And right now, this is going to be the last play for Jetney, and he has, has to make it count. Ooh. That's a really bold play, putting Lewis at six memory. And he gets his Sanuman in hand. We talked about it before. That could be a big component to his strategy. It could absolutely swing the tide of the game here as well. One of the big kind of like adaptations of yellow in BG7 as well is that, you know, the hybrids have been really strong, but some of the kind of old heroes of the yellow card pool are rising back in action as well. Like Dinasmon has been suddenly super amazing in being able to just, you know, kind of like set up the win con for Sasanomon. It really is kind of like the setup for Sasanomon that you need. And on top of that, of yeah. course, when you play so many tamers in the back, Shine Greymon just feels like an auto-include in a lot of these yellow decks as well. Oh yeah, man. Shine Greymon. If you, if you can't mention Tamers in yellow without mentioning Shine Greymon, being able to just blow up the opponent's side of the board for every Tamer you have, it's, it's a crazy effect. Ooh, but taking out the Zoe there, that really hurts. That's good. He's got the Kumon there again, being able to strip one of the sources from one of the opponent's Digimon. Zoe Orimoto's gotta go, but... You know, it's going to replace it with TK and Kyrie. It's fine. <laughs> yep, and we knew that was there as well from the search effect earlier. So now it's going to be just a question of how much more does Lewis want to push on this turn? He has to be very careful now as well because of how many security he leaves Jitney at. If Jenny at any point has less security than Lewis, then the TK and Kyrie is going to give them plus two memory at the beginning of the turn. Oh, that is right. One thing I want to do bring attention to is that he still hasn't used his memory boost, and this is kind of his last turn where he can do that. So he needs to be very, very careful now going through the the remainder of this turn. Yeah, he's got three memory to work with. Oh man, Ooh. the Schwarz Lassar's check on security is crazy big there. Yep. So this is one of the you know kind of one of the strengths of yellow is that. They can just choose to play purple Digi Eggs and, you know, a, a few purple cards in their main deck as well in order to have access to this mm -hmm. incredible purple option card that basically for every Digimon with hybrid traits or Tamer you have in play, you delete an opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon. So look at this, just instant board clear, just like that. Everything that Lewis was building up into, gone, reduced to ashes. He had such good momentum in that turn. Now he's got nothing left on the board. He can't spin the blue memory boost next turn. Oh man, this is rough. Oh. I wonder what else he can still do this turn. It feels like a lot of the stuff he was building up to is just kind of turning into naught. Okay, Dave is being played, I pushing Jetney to three. Oh, okay, Davis is good though. It's gonna give him a bit of memory every single turn, so he's gonna be able to get something outside of uh, the blue memory boost. And this is just, it feels tough for Lewis's deck because, you know, he's really reliant on that kind of like damage burst, and I'm sure he had a level 6 queued in that hand to just go into from the Beowulf as well. You'd have to imagine, right? But sadly, those plans weren't going as well as he had expected. Oh no, Jetney has four security here, so he's gonna get the plus two memory off of the TK and Kyrie. Oh. Talk about insult yes, to injury sir. over there. Yeah, I think right now Jetney, he's looking really, really good. This Gazi one now in play as well. So the, you know, the denial of the memory gain is active. And this is definitely gonna put Lewis in a bit of a sticky situation. 
no. Okay. Oh, he goes into the dark spawn he here. Ooh. That is huge. So Dennis Bond, we talked about it earlier. This is essentially just kind of the setup play, as I like to put it. And we get to see mm -hmm. he's going to basically go through the top six cards of his deck. And they can choose up to two level six or lower Digimon from among them and add them to his hand. And then he yep. cashes the remaining cards, which means that is just fodder for his Susano one later on. And on top of that, and we every time during both yours and your opponent's turn, Every time something is removed from your security stack, if you have three or less security, you recover one as well. Yeah, Dynasmon, such a strong card in tandem with the Susanumon. I want to see if we'll have a chance to actually get the Susanumon out on the board. And look, look at Jetney's trash. It's it's pretty it's pretty high right now. So <laughs> there's definitely a chance oh, we yeah. might see the Susanumon come out. Could it be? He only has one memory to work with. Gotta keep that in mind. You know, he definitely had to commit quite a lot this turn, too. Oh, and of course, don't forget to recover oh. one that he has. That's right. From the Dinus Mons. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Dinus Mon. Much appreciated. <laughs> yes, he's gonna sir. finish out the turn there by playing out the TK and the Kyrie, which means that next turn, if he has less security than, than Lewis, then he's gonna be gaining plus four memory on top of the minimum three memory oh. that TK is going to set him at. So every single turn now could potentially be seven memory to start. <laughs> yep, and that sounds like the perfect recipe for Sasanomon to come in swinging with a plus two security that it has. And I think that that is exactly what Jetney is trying to set up for. And right now, like for Lewis, it's difficult. Suddenly he has four security to clear in one turn, like no memory gain outside of Tamer effects. This is looking like a sticky situation, and his Dinas one is going to make things even more annoying because that effect is also active during his turn. So when he attacks, oh, it's reduced. He's down to three. Recover one. <laughs> I would say he's going to go into the Kindle Gururumon here. I think this is a play just to gain some resources in hand. Kindle Gururumon being able to digivolve off a level four for just one cost, even though it itself is a level four Digimon. Yep, exactly. Okay, but now I think he's just kind of fishing, like trying to draw into something that can keep his plays going. Is he missing a level five in this hand? Potentially, man. I... We did see that pretty much every search he came up with had the Stravimon or a level sixes, so I think he might be missing some of the centerpieces to connect into the level six. Oh, okay. Second Kinogurumon is going to come out here. Okay, so this is, he does have jamming on this particular one as well, which is good, mm -hmm. but that's still, you know, you have four security to work with to, to you know, pierce through, and Dinas is also gonna turn that into a bit of an issue. The one thing I do want to start bringing Check. attention to is that, oh, oh that Shangrimon, while normally would be enough, it is gonna be, you know, kind of taken care of by the jamming ability. But you know what I like here is that, you know, it might seem kind of weird, like, why is Lewis swinging like that, you know? He, he knows that the the security is just going to come back, but maybe mm -hmm. Lewis is starting to see how, like, aggressively Jetney's been discarding cards from his deck into the trash. Is he just trying to potentially deck his opponent out? Yeah, he definitely does have to feel like uh, he's on a bit of a timer, so he's got he's to make some kind of aggressive plays here. And, uh, man... The Stravimon is actually pretty good here. Can he find level 5 to connect? Oh, there's one! There's one! Oh, the that's good. Mon. That's good. He's going to take it immediately. No hesitation. No hesitation. He knows exactly what he wants. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Jetney's side here, he looks like he is all set up. Minimum 3 memory. He's, oh, He's going to go to yeah, 7. We did see the uh, reinforcing yeah, memory boost also check in security, <laughs> which means he potentially has, what, 12 memory here? <laughs> oh my god. He's just going to be jumping through. Like, this is, you know, I was, I was just talking about the Dino Spawn potentially, like, leading into a kind of like a deck out victory for Lewis, but Susanomon, that we know is in hand, will immediately counter that because, of course, he sends back the, the 10 cards to the bottom of the deck. Ooh, 
okay, guys. he's actually like, choosing to attack with Venusmon into. into. Mm hmm. I like it. I like it. Yeah, so you don't want to, you know, potentially make the scary play of swinging your Venusmon into security and then potentially losing it. So, you know what? Just take out the board, keep Lewis's board light and clear, and then you can just push through with your your hybrids here and then wait to get to Susano. Exactly. Okay, he's down to five here. Of course, he can still jump plenty. Okay, Jet Sylphimon for one. That's another recovery. Going back up to four this play. time. So, does he have a way to get to level six here? Is that. I mean, look at that trash. Okay. There's so many cards. He's got to be almost set up for Susano but... at this point. I feel like he's getting oh close, my but... God. double dinosaur. Uh oh, that's insult seems... to injury, man. Okay. All right, so gotta make sure that they have to. Oh yeah, pay for the cost here as well. Here, yeah. Doing memory calculations. All right, so let's go down. Yeah, put him at zero. Yeah. zero by doing this play. Not bad though. I mean, he does have the reinforcing removes to put himself back up to potentially six. To spend even more memory this turn and uh he's double checking the what's in the trash here he's got to get to the piece making the count on. he's almost there but is he though i'm actually not seeing as many hybrids in the trash as i had hoped for so let's see which digimon is going to add to hand looks like it's going to be the jet sylphie and the shine graymon yep that's gonna be the case mm. but that's a lot of options that went down okay Okay. Oh, so yeah, here it needs to also recover the one from the Dynasmon's effect. Yep. And we should be good right. to go. I think he's going to declare an attack on Lewis's other Kendo Gurumon here. Yep. Oh, so, man. of course, you know, you want to undo any kind of aggression that Lewis has been pushing. Try to make sure that he cannot keep getting away with these small pokes, you know, by recovering more and more and more and just setting up for the Sasanomon. You also won't deck out, which is really, really strong. Yeah, how many cards are left in uh, Jetney's deck? I don't see many, which is kind of problematic. Yeah. Uh, wait, is that two? Uh, That's dangerous I, because I that means... Not. Wait Wait a second. Wait a second. Doesn't that mean that Dynasmon... Two cards left in deck that we... Oh, we that, wait a second. Doesn't Dynasmon yeah. just proc twice on... Because you go down... And then you, you get forced to proc and you draw for turn, you're down to zero. Uh-oh, hold on here. Let's let's see if Lewis figures this out. Yeah, does he see does he see the, the is he piecing together the puzzle? But double dinosaur is he's dropping essentially ten cards into the trash. He's gone through a ton already. Man. This is so dangerous. Like committing to the second dinosaur. Sure, like, I, I assume he was missing the parts for Susanomon, but it just feels like that might have to, been a bit too risky to go into the second one like that. To be fair, I mean, he did have the option of just digivolving one of his Dynasmons into Susanomon. Lewis's board at that time was pretty clear, so I, I think I would have felt good going into Susanomon there. He had the memory to, to do it, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that's true, but keep in mind that if you hard, if you actually go into Susanomon from the actual, just like going from a level six, you don't get to put back cards from your trash to your deck. Okay, the recover is coming up. There's one card left in deck. All right, it's Kori Kakumon here. Uh oh. Oh, oh no. it's gonna get the attack. So this is gonna just. Oh. So of course, first Venus things Mon. first, he gets to take the security. Dinosmon oh. forces the recovery, and that's it. That's it. Oh, Jedney no. draws with no cards in deck. Ice wall just to add insult oh. to injury. Double. Make that double. <laughs> what a way to take it all. Lewis oh. is going to be the one. The champion, the defender that defended against them all. We've been talking about how he's been able to find wins in the most creative ways possible, but that one definitely takes the cake. Good lord.
if you want to talk about people who are deserving of being a champion, this guy, Louis the Panda, has the biggest Digimon brain I have ever seen from anybody. But you know what? Oh, uh, yeah. We've talked him up all day. Let these guys let these guys speak for themselves. We're going to hear from the challenger as well as Louis the Panda the champion. Let's take a look. Uh, it was a fun matchup. I figured I might be playing against Magna Grudemon, uh, but I really misplayed when I played a second Dynasmon, and it really it pretty much just decked me myself out. I mean, the second Dynasmon really messed me over pretty much. Um, I, I really like the the hybrids that they can just did you evolve on top of the the tamers, so they they can pretty much be safe most of the time. So it really adds a new flavor to the Digimon game instead of just having them come out of security or out of the Digimon raising area. So uh, the games were really intense, really crazy matches. Uh, we had a player that decked out, and overall it was just really really exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the Digi Showdown. Uh, for sure, the player that decked out, uh, that was one of the games where things were looking really grim. And as I, you know, passed on my final turn, as he passed on to me, I was like, how am I ever going to win this game? And then my brain was just, you know, ticking, ticking. Eventually I was like, okay, I'm going to deck him out. It's the only way. Uh, so I'm really happy with that outcome. Uh, they all performed really well. I love all the Digimon in the deck. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the Garurum Online. Nine was amazing. I think the biggest aspect of this uh, event was that people were not able to accurately estimate how many attacks my deck could get off in a single turn. You know, with Magna being able to be warped into and then he could restand all the Digimon and all his tamers. So I had a lot of aggression and uh, it went really well overall. I'm really happy. Okay, I also just want to say thank you to everyone that supported me along the way. I've practiced really hard for this event, really played my heart out. So everyone that I've played Digimon with this past year that's helped me improve and be a better player, uh, thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it. And just like that, that's gonna be it for this side of the bracket. We got to see some incredible plays. I didn't expect, you know, just to be able to see the lines of play from Lewis as well, just go like, oh, two cards left in deck? Well, that's a nice dinosaur one you have there. It would be a shame <laughs> if it's what leads to your demise. Absolutely incredible use of all of the tools that he had in his deck. Being able to use all the hybrids as well to just get all those security checks going in order to force the recoveries. But of course, on the yellow side as well, you know, we saw the strength of being able to set up your drop zone for the Susano Mon, you know, didn't quite manage to find that connection to the very end, but being able to have the setup, being able to force out the extra attacks, extra recovery, is one of the great strengths of Yellow here as well. And I think that, you know, for those of you looking at these decks, looking at the hybrid power in BT7, there's a lot to be excited about. The cards from the latest booster set that you just saw in action are currently available. Check out a store near you for details. Digimon Card Game Next Adventure focuses on the characters of the Digimon Frontier anime. The set features multiple hybrid Digimon and tamers with special effects. There are two box toppers for this set. The first is an alternate art tamer card. The second is the box promotion pack Adventure, which features one of six SR option cards. Additionally, the lineup also includes eight special campaign rares that feature Digimon and tamers together. Don't miss this chance. Digimon Card Game Next Adventure is available right now. All right, guys, and so there you have it. Louis the Panda, our champion, walking away with a 5-0 perfect record, earning himself that $10,000 mega level prize. Different fight. How do you feel about those matches, buddy? You know, we're starting the DG Showdown. I was really, you know, I was looking at the regulations, I was looking at the kind of challenges that everyone has to go through, I was like, there's no way someone's gonna go undefeated, right? I was like, there's no way that like <laughs> the the challengers will will win all five games. You know, the the defender has to be so strong, but also like ah, you know, the champion, as great as a champion is, surely it's gonna be like a challenger that can just manage to get at least one win. But Lewis took it all. He beat every single challenger and took home the ten thousand dollar prize. And ladies and gentlemen, there is more where that came from because we have a whole nother bracket, a whole new challenge, like whole set of challengers and another defending champion for you guys in the next set of games for Digi Showdown. And I cannot wait to get into it. This has been us, and we can't wait to see some more amazing plays for the Digi Showdown. We'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.